On the next Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz, his family has long ties to the history of Georgia, and he works to preserve that history for future generations. This city calls herself the gateway to the South. I build stuff. Now he's in the process of fulfilling his father's final wish to restore a park that will signify the ability to rise above our differences. And it will be the most beautiful park in the country. There's nothing like it. The National Monuments Foundation President Rodney Cook Jr. Atlanta Business Chronicles Biz, Sundays at 11 a.m. on 11 Alive following Meet the Press. Sponsored by Georgia Power. During his life, Rodney Mims Cook Sr. would help bring Atlanta into national prominence. As an Atlanta City Alderman and a member of the Georgia House of Representatives, his legislation laid the groundwork for many of the region's major economic drivers. Atlanta Hartsville Jackson Airport, Interstate 7585, Underground Atlanta, and Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, former home of the Atlanta Braves and Atlanta Falcons sports franchises. On social issues, Rodney Cook always found himself in the middle. He was an arbiter, sometimes by law, at other times by his own cognizance, driven by a sense of moral justice. That personal integrity was in direct opposition to the forces of division in Atlanta, forces that would turn their ire on Cook and those close to him. But he would persist, primarily because of his love of Georgia and his belief in the promise of its capital city. Despite the tragedy and the turmoil, he knew what it could be. Now, a place dear to his heart, Mims Park, Atlanta's first integrated park, which faded away over half a century ago, is making a comeback. Rodney Cook Jr. is president of the National Monuments Foundation and Millennial Gate. And he's working on a number of initiatives to preserve not only his father's history, but that of Georgia also, as you'll see in today's executive profiles. What was it like for you as a child growing up in the city? It was exciting, uh, dynamic, and terrifying. The thing that most impacted me as a kid uh, was dad's career. He was in the state house at large. He was in the city council at large for about 20 years. Dad was particularly involved in the issue around the Peyton Road Barricade. You might recall that was uh, early 60s. Uh, the blacks were prospering and moving into the Cascade area and uh, the community, 99% white at the time, said to the mayor, what are we gonna do about this? And uh, so he built a wall over Peyton Road and the understanding with the black community was they wouldn't move north of that wall. And that was something that really infuriated my father and Mayor Hartsfield, uh, who went down there to look at it together and uh, it was determined that dad would address it. He said, Americans do not wall themselves off from their fellow Americans. This is not what we're about. And how old were you at the time? And I was that? around five. As a five-year-old, you probably didn't understand what was going on. No, I understood it very well because Dad was very close to Daddy King, mm -hmm. uh, friendly with Dr. King, but very close to Daddy King, who introduced him to the black community, which traditionally gave him 87% of the vote. Subsequent to that uh, Peyton Road barricade issue, uh, all hell broke loose when Dad made that speech. And so... My mother's answering the telephone and people are saying, we're going to kidnap your kids, we're going to kill your husband, we're, you know, bad things. And uh, so they went up to the mountains to play some golf just to calm down a few weeks after it toned down some. And so we were at home, I, I've got two sisters, and a uh, clan showed up. They burned across in the yard, Valley Road in Buckhead. Right. Uh, and it was terrifying. I have a two-year-old sister and eight-year-old sister, and so I was thinking, how am I going to get my little sister out of this house should they throw stuff inside and start to ignite the building? Um, I didn't talk for a year. You, you, you attended Washington and Lee, came back to Atlanta. Um, you got very involved in, in, um, in the concept of monuments. Talk to me about what the importance of monuments are to this city and why that became a focal point for you in terms of your career. Well, I'm, I'm a classicist, and um, Mr. Schutze, Philip Schutze, was a great architect of this city, and he did four houses of various family members of ours, and Mr. Schutze really took me under his wing and taught me everything he knew before he died because he thought that traditionalism in architecture was over. And so any little kid like me that might have a little bit of a flame left over, uh, he was going to help. When people drive through Midtown uh, and they drive down 17th Street, uh, they see the Millennial Arch, which I think is a fascinating piece of architecture that was something you came up with 
What was the concept behind it, and what were you thinking in, in, in building the archway? What was, the, what, what was the, the dream behind it? We were doing a lot of, my company was doing a lot of houses all over Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Bob Stern is a friend of mine. What Stern told us in this self-congratulatory assembly of the ICAA in New York, all you guys do is design pretty houses for rich people. And the only way that you're gonna make an impact and reco recover and reclaim our cities, which have been designed for the last 100 years for the automobile, uh, is to get out in the civic realm and build parks and monuments and civic places and libraries and museums that people love to be around. We are the capital not only of this region, but of the state of Georgia, of which I'm also very proud. And our, we are one of the 13 original colonies. There's no place in this city to go find out anything about the extraordinarily rich Georgia history. We do that. And this city calls herself the gateway to the South. And I build stuff. You typically, if you call yourself a gateway, you have a gate. But we have one of the finest museums in the country. Of all the things you've been involved in in your career, this one's gonna leave a lasting legacy for your family's name. Tell me about the park that's being developed on the west side. We were privileged to have my dad live with us his last year. He came to us having had a fall and um, with two weeks to spare. Two weeks ended up being 13 months and it was the best year that we had ever with him. And all his friends were coming to say, essentially say goodbye. Sure. He didn't know that. He thought everybody would come to say hi. Right, exactly. And so he was having a great time, and, um, and he's thinking about stuff that he hadn't finished. Uh, and so he compelled me, son, go put Mims Park back in that community that was always so good to me. Sometime in 2018, there'll be a, a, a new park for the west side of Atlanta that people have not, could never have imagined five years ago in that community. That's correct, and it will be the most beautiful park in the country. There's nothing like it, and it is the uh, narrative of peace that we possess, this state possesses since Tomochichi befriended Oglethorpe in 1733. Uh, this place is astonishing, and we don't tell the story by far well enough. This park alone is gonna do it. But what it's gonna do to the people who actually live on the west side of Atlanta right now, it's gonna, it's gonna really change their lives. Yes, it is. The National Monuments Foundation being the lead on the monument component of this park is what ingratiated us to this community because they want to be remembered. Their community gave the world something quite special. It's one of the things that is one of the more unique things that any city could possess is came directly out of Vine City. Gentrification will happen. Now, tons of jobs are going to happen too. They're already happening and we're going to be one of the employers because we're going to be operating some of the stuff in this park. It is going to impact that area, they think, 10 times what the third, the, uh, the fourth ward park did over there. Construction on the Rodney Cook Senior Park is scheduled to be completed later this year. Besides its namesake, the park will feature statues of prominent figures from Georgia history.